Yeah, hello and welcome to this video. Yeah, this video is about a project that is now completed and released, the English opening repertoire. Yeah, what is this? This is a product that um, is released by Chess24. I've completed this repertoire um, a couple of weeks ago and now it is released in both English and German language. I now have the English version on. I mean, you can switch the um, language here on the side and it's um, an identical product besides the language, of course, for both English and, uh, and German. It's a video series um, of in total eight hours. So we can see if I, if I scroll a little bit down here, yeah, this is like seven hours, 54 minutes here for the English version. Um, yeah, what's it all about? It's a complete uh, repertoire based on the move 1c4. This means um, we will be in the English opening most of the time. Uh, technically, in some cases, it will be the Reti opening yeah, because it, it is usually called the English if black goes like e5 or, uh, or c5. Um, but in case of e6 and black going uh, d5 later, um, it's going to be a Reti opening technically or after c6 as well. Um, there are very, very rare cases where I will transpose into a regular d4 opening. And I think in one or two lines this happens because it is just by far the best option. However, those transpositions are never um, connected to any serious um, theoretical work. So there's not going to be a point in the repertoire where I say, okay, now you should book a, a, buy a 400 page book and learn that because uh, this is the mainline King's Indian. This is not happening. So it's a, f a fully standalone uh, product that can help you to play the move 1c4 with, um, I think, reasonable confidence. Um, it always helps to study even more, but I think um, it is uh, enough to play it on a decent, on a decent level. If you've watched my, my channel recently, um, you, see, you saw me uh, play C4 a lot. I was trying this repertoire out in those, uh, in those games and I had enormous success with it. I even think, um, yeah, with better conversion, I could have uh, even scored better. Um, what I want to do here is to give you a quick overview about this, what is uh, part of the repertoire. So we start with 1C4. The first um, and arguably and biggest part of the repertoire deals with the move 1e5, so the reversed um, Sicilian. Um, I suggest to play the move g3 here in this position, very early g3. I think um, this is the most consistent move also for um, move order reasons. Whenever you issue c4, you have to be aware that it's a maze of transpositions. Um, black for example, can start with 1e5, but he can also start with knight f6, which in fact is just by statistics the most popular move. Thing is, if you play g3 now, black has e5 or c5 or whatever available, so he's very flexible. So your second move should always take into account that black can play basically any pawn structure still, e6, c6, whatever. And this is really important. For example, if you would go knight c3 here, it's a perfectly fine move, um, but it does not really fit well with this idea of playing a quick g3. If black now plays e6, for example, it's basically over with any g3 ideas as after d5, Black is trying to play d5 to d4, and this is very annoying. We don't want to play d4 ourselves here and have a Catalan where the knight is wrong on c3. So it's very, very important to be consistent with your move orders. For this repertoire, to have a consistent uh, concept, I'm always playing 2g3 on the second on the second move. Um, only, um, yeah, only small exception is 1b6, where g3 doesn't make a lot of sense. Other than that, always 2g3. So let's start with e5, g3. Black now, of course, has a choice. He can play um, the reversed open Sicilian with knight f6, bishop g2, and d5. Or he can play um, a setup where he does not open up the center all that quickly. Um, against this, my suggestion is to 
play this variation up to this point here on move eight. This is the main line. And now I suggest the interesting move rook to b1, which is a tricky idea. White wants to play very quick b4. This leads to interesting complications if black um, yeah, is unaware of the best reply, uh, which is a5. If it does not play a5, I think white has reasonably good chances to get a small advantage and at times uh, even more because it, it can get complicated and black can easily uh, lose the way there. a5 is, uh, as I said, the best move after which d3, bishop e3, white has chances for a very small edge. It is not much, but it is a, um, a good position to play. This is the reversed open Sicilian. And then there are, there are tons of lines where black does not go for that. Um, one idea is c6 in this position, basically trying to play d5. After that, my idea is to go knight f3 and play this position. This has become reasonably popular in recent years for white. And I think white has a good chances to fight for a small edge here as well. Um, it leads to complicated play and uh, also I feel that the black players do not um, know it all, all, too, all too well. You know, they are more, uh, I think, knowledgeable in the main line, which is d4, which is not a bad move at all. It's just that I think knight f3 is interesting. The same thing, by the way, applies for this way. I also suggest, suggest to go knight f3. Um, another a big complex is this, eh? the reversed closed Sicilian against this. I suggest to play with an early rook to b1, where white um, plays b4, b5. Uh, I cannot draw arrows here. This is uh, not an analysis board. This is just a, a board that is connected to the video. This is a nice feature on Chess24 where you can actually enter your own moves in any given position. It just doesn't have the full commentary function. Um, Okay, so rook b1, early b4, b5. This is a, a common idea in my repertoire that white wants to play for that long diagonal b4, b5, open up the bishop. I suggest to play in the same fashion if black plays like d6, g6 in this kind of, in this kind of um, situation here. Um, black also has other stuff. He can, he can try uh, things like that, yeah, the, the Karpov system, this, is this kind of position where I suggest to play with a3, e3, knight e2, and then later d4. In all those positions, I think white has a quite good control of the game, even though black is certainly not in terrible shape. He's obviously very solid. He only has played very healthy and uh, and, and reasonable moves. Um, what I also um, I think is, is played quite often um, in the c4, e5, complex is this um, kind of reverse Grand Prix. Um, not a big deal, I think. I have, um, I think, good lines with, with E3 available. So C4, E5 is a very popular, very popular option. I think uh, I'm quite happy with what I what I found there, or what I um, compiled there as a repertoire suggestion. I have played 1C4 quite a lot over the years, but I stopped doing this um, maybe like 10, 15 years ago because I got a little bit sick of e5. And um, I have to say that what I now found and stock of new ideas or ideas that I didn't know at least, and it's not like they're brand new, but uh, I only learned about them while uh, compiling this repertoire. I'm very happy with those uh, ideas. So I think I'm going to play c4 more often also in, in long time control games. Um, yeah, the next big part of the repertoire is 1c5. Um, after which I also suggest to play g3. This um, fits well because after one knight f6, again, there's also g3 can be played. By the way, throughout the repertoire, I keep um, pointing out um, possible alternatives. So it's not just, okay, here's my move and everything else is, is nonsense, which definitely is not the case. The English opening is a very flexible opening where you have many choices. This is also what makes uh, this opening, I think, attractive to many top players nowadays. They, of course, use it as an alternate weapon because they don't find anything against the main lines. But they also, I think, appreciate that um, it is a flexible opening where many options are possible. And that makes this computer um, guided preparation uh, 
far less possible. Okay, after g3, there are a couple of options for black. He can play in a closed fashion, like doing the same thing basically, after which my recommendation is to play like this and go for rook b1, b4 again, play on this queen side, and then play on the queen side. Um, I think black with precise play um, can equalize here. Yeah? It's not um, that this is um, a hugely aggressive option for white, but it keeps all the pieces on the board and leads to positions where you can definitely fight and do that in a long game. It's not that play gets simplified. There are still, however, a couple of interesting ideas there that should be mentioned. For example, some some lines like e5 um, get punished immediately with b4. White often can sacrifice a pawn here. Another line that um, um, I I looked at, for example, is um, a3. I have to remember this is actually not that easy. A3. What was the line? <laughs> a3, um, B, B6, E3. I have, I have a couple of interesting ideas there that um, I think um, can catch a black player um, easily unawares. Um, this is the closed line. Black also can opt for a quick D5, opening up the position himself. Yeah, this is um, also quite interesting. Here I have actually two suggestions the move queen to a4, which is very tricky for black. If he doesn't know his uh, his theory there, he will get into trouble, very, very likely. Or I suggest alternatively um, this idea, which is quite poisonous. White again wants to play for a quick b4 if black goes for e5. Or he has this option to play even h4 if g6 is played, leading to very original positions Yeah, with an early h4. I think this is an interesting line for white. Um, yeah, in the c4, c5 complex, there is really not much else which is of any serious importance. Black sometimes plays stuff like this, but white um, always, um, I think, has chances for an edge here. I mean, there are transpositions to the Tarash now with d5, but uh, which is maybe the best option, objectively speaking. If black plays for some kind of hedgehog with a6, and uh, queen c7, um, white will get an advantage because black is committed to those moves very early on and that does not equalize. So no problems there for white at all. c4, c5, however, is in general a very, very solid option. So it's not something where you can expect um, a huge advantage out of the bat. Next part of the repertoire is 1c6. Um, and here in this particular uh, position, um, this is a very nice example of the flexibility of this opening. Here white can play, I mean, reasonably four, five, six different uh, things. Um, while against d4, let's say, if we compare this yeah, to d4, d5, c4, c6, yeah, here white just plays a slav. Okay, he can choose now. He can play the exchange, he can play this, whatever. He has a couple of options, but compare after c4, c6. Now white can do all that because after d4, d5, we get a slav, but he can also play e4, transposing to a, a Karo Khan all of a sudden. No, it could easily get into the Panov attack. Or he can play g3, which is my recommendation, after d5, knight f3, leading to a Reti opening. Or you can play knight f3, d5, e3, which is also quite poisonous. Um, this line, I think, is actually quite interesting um, and uh, would have made good material for this uh, for this series. But there are transposition uh, issues, of course, um, because, well, black can always play knight f6, g3, c6, and then you're committed to g3. Yeah, so what I'm looking at at the end is this line where white offers a pawn on c4. This leads to a um, very interesting play. I think the best option for black is to actually take on c4 which leads to really wild positions. This is maybe is one of the sharpest parts of this repertoire. Um, it's good to know that here there are also some traps for black. For example, the normal looking move um, bishop g4 can easily lead into huge issues in a line like this, where the black bishop here is in danger of being trapped with h5. Here, black is in some trouble already, but it happens all over again because it's such a natural move. So 
Black here um, can play um, solid moves, bishop g4, bishop f5, as I said. Um, in all those, I think white has chances for um, a slight pull. It depends a little bit uh, how precise black is, uh, is playing. If he's playing very precisely, he has equalizing chances, of course, but it's still quite nice for white. g6 also sometimes played, after which b3, um, I think, is a, is a good answer. Yeah, it's something like this. It's... Um, it's a quiet option, but I think white <clears throat> has the more effective pieces here. Yeah, the bishop on b2 is strong, and you can um, always, um, yeah, you can initiate play quicker on the queen side here as white. Uh, sometimes you can take at the right moment on d5, or there are other ways to put pressure on the queen side with pieces. The absolutely critical um, variation is coming in this position, and this is the capture. After this, castles. White plays in many variations a real gambit. This pawn is just lost and you need to get compensation for it. There are some very, very interesting lines there. For example, something like b5, a4, bishop b7, b3, leading to a very interesting play on the queen side. Um, yeah, here, uh, after takes, takes, white has excellent compensation. A more critical move is arguably b4 after which knight e5 is a <clears throat> very interesting idea. Yeah, the queen can pick up some material there, but uh, it's it's going to get trapped on a2. There are tons of interesting ideas there, and there are alternatives. So white, for example, the move d3 is also quite interesting, this kind of idea. So many complications, and I can show you more, but um, as I said, it's an eight-hour series, so it's impossible to and and on and also unwanted <laughs> to show you each and every line there. This is a uh, very very sharp. Um, a line that uh, is um, extremely interesting to look at here is is this one. Knight B D seven, Queen C two, B six, um, Knight A three, Bishop E six, Knight E five, Queen D four, Knight C six. This is also an extremely sharp line where I can guarantee you if the black player has not seen it and he's not a fantastic fantastic player, uh, he will get huge problems here. It's a, it's a super complicated line. Here, for example, yeah, the black player has to find or know that king d8 is the best move. Everything else already leads into some issues. Yeah, And it's a good uh, example here that the English opening is not just something, something boring. Yeah? This is <laughs> everything else. So in c4, c6, there are quite a number of, of sharp lines that can happen. Okay, um, we have also e6. Um, usually the choice of players who want to play queen's gambit declined, which could easily happen after knight c3, d5, d4, and it's a queen's gambit. And this is not a bad option at all if you know this opening. Um, my preposition, however, is g3 making sense as black can always start knight f6 and we know the deal. So here we get this kind of situation. It's a ratty opening with black being committed to e6. Yeah, here um, there are mostly two options for black. You can play a quick capture. We will get the spawn back. And I think white has chances for a slide. It's just really a slight advantage here. You get this back. Black can play c6 on knight bd7. Um, or you can just keep the tension like this. Um, after which, again, there is a good choice for white. Um, you can play d4 for the main line of the Catalan opening with chances to press for a slide edge again. Um, not covered in my series because I don't do those transpositions uh, because it's just too much to, to deal with. Um, but if you know the Catalan already or feel that is an interesting option, it's a, a good uh, thing to get in your repertoire here. Uh, G3 is my, uh, B3 is my suggestion, staying within the red team. Um, generally, I opt for those kind of, situ uh, kind of um, positions where white takes. I don't like it so much if they play D5 to D4 and we get a reverse Benoni. This is possible in my repertoire, but usually under relatively favorable circumstances. Yeah, this is a typical way of, of playing where um, white has a very, very slight advantage. It's a totally risk-free kind of position, by the way. So if you want to uh, have a 
solid uh, game against a strong player, this is the way to go. I mean, I mean, you really have to play um, absolute nonsense afterwards to get into trouble. And so, so the right position is uh, that solid. Um, one thing that's also covered is that option of um, black, I'm sorry, going c5 and going to the Tarash defense. The Tarash is something that you cannot avoid actually. Black can always play d5, e6, knight f6, c5 and so on. And I cover this line against the Tarash with an early b3. I think it's interesting. I've um, selected a simple uh, sub-variation that uh, can be played without much theoretical effort. So I think uh, this is a good, a good option, a simple option against the Tarash, which is also covered in the series. Um, I wonder if I've forgotten something really, really substantial. I don't think so. For an overview, I think this is uh, quite okay. Um, the next part deals with the, the rare moves. What is rare in this, uh, in this kind of regard? A couple of really exotic ones, but also some moves that are very important. The most important, arguably, of course, knight f6. I go g3, and now we have a maze of transpositions. In most cases, black now um, commits um, with a pawn move. He, he rarely has anything else. And often he will transpose, like c5 would transpose, or e5, and so on. The thing that is kind of standalone is black going g6, and now choosing either to play in the style of the Grunfeld, or in the style of the King's Indian, just completing the Fianchetto. Um, in the Grunfeld, I think white here, in this pseudo Grunfeld or neo Grunfeld, I think white has excellent chances for an advantage. I don't see how black even gets close to equalizing. White has early h4 ideas, and I think has a slight advantage or more if black helps a little bit in, in, in basically any line. Um, they also play bishop g7, knight c3, castles, just for king's Indian. And in this case, white again has a very good choice. If you play the Fianchetto variation of the king's Indian, d4 is good. It's kind of comparable to that Catalan option. Or what I'm proposing is to play d3 and stay within the realms of the English opening. I suggest to play with rook b1 and b4 again. Um, but this is very flexible. So if again, after d6, White can play basically anything in terms of central setup. You can play this, what I suggest. You can also play e4 or e3 or knight f3. There are many, many options, um, which makes this, again, a very, very flexible opening choice. Um, again, I, I, I propose this to play a quick rook b1. This will, in almost all cases, transpose to some line that usually starts with c4, e5, as e5 is an absolutely natural move in this position. Um, other things here covered under rare moves or other moves is b6. After b6, um, the move g3 isn't all that great because I don't want this to happen. It looks really quite ugly. It's not terrible for white, but really not what we want. So in this case, I propose oops, to go with e4, bishop to b7, and knight c3. After e6, knight e2, I think white has quite reasonable chances to be to be better. It's a tricky, tricky move, but I don't want to explain it in detail here. So I'm just going to say against b6, there is no g3, but it doesn't really worry uh, us all that much. Um, there are moves that are almost purely transpositional, like d6, for example. Um, but something that has some uh, value um, on its own is f5, the Dutch uh, approach. Of course, I play g3 again. It's good to know that the stone wall is not a particularly great idea against this because d3, e4 is a very dangerous option. For example, if we, okay, arguably this is the worst possible version <clears throat> for black, but this is um, a position where black will suffer. Yeah, it looks very, very ugly. White getting an e4 all that early. Um, of course, black does not have to do that. He can play the classical Dutch with d6. In this um, case, I actually recommend to play with d4. This is one of the rare uh, cases where I suggest to just transpose into a mainline opening simply because um, white just has the better chances against this opening without any big effort. So what else is there? There is the Leningrad, of course, with g6. 
Um, and again, white can now, if he desires so, play a main line. But what I suggest is to just play in, in English style and just handle it like d65 will happen. And this is actually what will happen most of the time because um, because black um, wants to do that anyway. Yeah? He wants to play d65. It's part of this f5 concept. But we can just play it in, in typical English opening style with b4 and so on. It's not a, a big deal actually. The Dutch um, setup will mostly transpose into some c4, e5 um, part of the repertoire. Um, yeah, and um, then I have a final, uh, more more fun video where I look at even more um, more obscure tries, um, stuff like g5, which is really really awful, but uh, it has been played by some odd good players. And if white does not uh, play the refutation, which is taking the pawn, it is actually somewhat playable. But this is a total refutation. And then, uh, yeah, knight c6, I look at briefly, a6, yeah, I know it's very obscure, but I think it's always fun to also check check out the, the really strange stuff. So, um, yeah, it's a complete repertoire. If you, um, if you really go through all the videos, it's 25 videos uh, total. I can scroll down a little bit to see how it is structured. Yeah, we have, um, I always have an intro for everything explaining the rough concepts. And then um, there are the, the single videos. Yeah, I don't think I've forgotten much in my overview. Only minor things I think I forgot. Um, I definitely cover all moves <laughs> on move one that remotely makes some sense. Even C4, B5, I think I have uh, something on. Yeah, so I think um, it's, a, it's a good um, way to start with the English opening. Um, it's always good to um, yeah make up your own mind and, and and work a little bit yourself on those on those um, openings. But the starting point I think with my repertoire is is quite good. Um, yeah, how do you actually get this? It is a product of Chess Twenty Four, and that means there are two ways of accessing this repertoire um, in both languages. You can buy um, a premium membership of Chess Twenty Four, which is I believe. I should know that actually. I believe uh, 10 euros a month or 10 dollars a month. So it's kind of, it's uh, it's not exa exactly expensive. Um, um, and you, with this one month membership, you get access to the whole stock of videos, which is really uh, an excellent deal in my opinion, because you can probably, if you buy this one month um, of, vid of, of membership and you, your idea is to watch like every video that they have, you're not going to manage in that one month because it's simply too much content. So um, investing this $10 or euros, okay, don't hit me if it's like $12, it's something like that. Um, I know it's 10 euros, <laughs> but not sure about the dollar amount. Um, that month uh, membership gives you access to this repertoire. However, be aware that if that month is over and you decide not to uh, continue the premium membership, you don't have access anymore. So it is a, it's a temporary thing. However, you can join for the one month, um, watch it, make notes, whatever, and go from there. This is definitely possible. The other option is to just buy the thing uh, on its own, let's say. For this, you don't need a membership of Chess24. You can just buy it in the shop. Um, and this is 20 euros. Um, I'm not sure about the dollar amount, I'm sorry. I could actually try if I, if I log out here. Let me check this, I could, I could check this. So it's 19.99 uh, euros. Um, this is German language. If I go to English, does this say, I'm not sure what, you, what they show. Um, it doesn't have a price here. That's kind of weird. It should be possible to buy it. Hmm. I have to, ch have to, um, I have to check that if you want the English, to buy the English, uh, English language uh, version. I mean, my recommendation is to, um, to get uh, the one month premium or, or longer time span, how much you want. Uh, I think uh, the, the whole video archive um, is an excellent deal, really. Uh, I, sorry, I have to log out. I'm sorry, this should work. If I log out, come on. Sorry, I didn't prepare this yeah, beforehand. So English and now log out. 
paid goes back to German. I don't know why that is. Anyway, so you can buy the standalone thing or get a membership uh, of the site. Um, I think the best deal is get a membership of the site, check out the video series. I mean, it's it's great stuff. There's uh, many, many videos here by Gustafsson, by uh, Yusupov, by Duretsky even, and so on. And many, many interesting things. So it's a good deal for the 10 bucks. Um, okay, I hope you enjoyed this overview. And um, yeah, I'm currently working on a new project, by the way. I can announce that as well. It's not for Chess24, it's for a different website. This will be um, a black repertoire with the Benko Gambit. Uh, it will take uh, still some weeks to complete, but there's something new to look out for. I'm not sure if the target group of the English opening and the Benko is kind of identical, but <laughs> it's an interesting project as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the overview here. Check the video series out. I think it's good stuff. Bye-bye. <laughs>